Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, I think everybody could use another week. Uh, when you look at everything that needs to be accomplished uh, from a, a coach's standpoint, a player standpoint, some of these players are just getting out of baseball. Um, you know, a week ago, that's as late. So I think it's, it's a little bit too early. Um, coaches will tell you it's never too early to put the pads on and get their team prepped. But I, I think that it's, it's just one more week that everybody has to get prepared. And, and I think it's all for the playoffs. As a photographer, I appreciate it. Get a little more light earlier in the season. You can maybe stretch it to three quarters, half full game of light. And so I'd like the early start. I just think the combination of two scrimmages played in a very condensed time, and then you're going to start week one, one week early. It's a recipe for disaster. Well, we're going to be here for a half hour on WBCB. Then we're going to be streaming on our website as well. So if you have some questions, you could uh, put those in the comments section of our Facebook uh, page, and we'll try to answer as many as we can. Starting this season earlier, because they've added a week to the playoffs, the big controversy in the offseason was 16 teams in the playoffs, basically uh, per region. There's more teams that are going to be in the playoffs than not in the playoffs this year, good, bad, or indifferent. It is what it is. and um, you know, it, it's going to be a blowout, a lot more blowouts in week one and even week two probably. And, but, you know, if that's what the rules are, that's what they play by. I think we're going to see the same thing we saw last year is some of these teams are actually going to pass on the opportunity. And I don't think that it's been measured by the OHSA is how you're going to essentially make that work if teams drop out during that opportunity of being a 16 seed against a one seed because you don't want your kids to get hurt. I've said this for a number of months. The OHSAA's decision doesn't make any sense, S-E-N-S-E, -S -E, but it surely makes a lot of sense, C-E-N-T-S. Well, and again, I think that's what it comes down to. I think the big controversy in the offseason was the Coaches Association was a big part of the playoff system last year during the COVID year. This year, from my understanding, they weren't told about this. This kind of happened, you know, when, when they weren't aware of it, and that's what caused all the controversy. Look, everyone basically is going to get into the playoffs. Uh, there's going to be some teams that are going to be on the outside looking in. Uh, Gary, I think you brought up a good point. You know, if you have a one play in a 16, that could be a very lopsided match. And then one play in eight, we've seen those matchups in the past be lopsided as well. So I think you're right, we could have two weeks of bad playoffs. And, and you know, what can you do other than try to not get injured and then try to stay fresh? And maybe there won't be enough, if, like DJ says, if enough teams back out, somebody will get a bye because there's not enough. There's not 18 teams in the region. I don't know. I guess we'll see how it You know, they, out. Talk, they talked about 12 to start, and then they kind of went to 16, and then we heard some controversy about, well, teams may not want to buy. The magic number for me is eight. I, I think eight is perfect. I think I remember when there was only two, then you went to four where, where you, you, know, you had to get in. Eight, you could possibly make a mistake and still get in. What do you guys think? I think it comes down to, does it even matter? Is it, is it worth celebrating making the playoffs anymore in, in football? I mean, every other sport, usually, you get in. Baseball, basketball, you're playing. I mean, look how long in the NCAA it took for a 16 seed to beat a one seed. Now we're talking about high school athletes. Um, it, it's, it's a recipe, like Ron said, for disaster, and I think it's going to be very challenging. So what's a magic number? I like eight. I like eight because you celebrate eight, you can go about points, and, and you can plan your schedule accordingly to how we get in and make the playoffs, as opposed to if you know you're not worthy of being in the playoffs, just cruising in. The magic number is 16 because that's what it is. And so, <laughs> yeah, but if you had your preference, yeah, what would it, it be? It, it, you know, it's it's going to end the same weekend. It's going to be cold, and somebody's going to get a state championship for the, you know, while well, the Buckeyes maybe will be playing for the Big Ten championship. I'm old school. Give me four. Four teams. I, I don't like eight at all. I, I, and you guys brought it up. There's too many blowouts in one versus eight or two versus seven. Give me four. All right. Well, again, if you have a question about a team or a topic you want us to discuss, put it into our Facebook comment, and we'll certainly uh, try to answer those the best we can. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with more of our high school football roundtable.
Welcome back to our high school football roundtable. That's DJ Gary, Ron, I'm Dana, as we talk about the 2021 high school football season. Gary, you're wearing Springfield. <laughs> I don't know, we all came neutral. <laughs> Go, you know, this is uh, nothing against South Range and Springfield for this game on, on Friday night, which a lot of us won't want to be. We expect a good ball game. This is more towards the third time's a charm for Bo Brungard and Sean Guerrero and all those guys, Mark Brungard and, and the team. My cousin Marshall Yelkins is on the team, so hopefully third time's a charm for Go Tigers. That's yeah, we were, we were all. Sorry, all, Spring, sorry, sorry, sorry. We, we were all going to no be offense. neutral. So, so Springfield are, are yeah. they the, the the best team in the area? Uh, well, I, I have a couple favorites, but they're one of them, and you know they have Bo Brungard, and that's it. It it's, it's, can be as simple as that, or you know people might not agree, but he does have a supporting cast. They got a little kid named Gardner that runs around, mm -hmm. and and uh, another tall receiver, number seven. I already forget his name. Um, but then he has weapons, and it's not like last year, you know. But but uh, it's when all else fails, there's. Bo Brungard on the ground, in the air. He's our, he just does it all. And, you know, barring injury, third time's a charm for Springfield. Now, Bo was a Mr. Football candidate last year, and I'm sure he'll be another one this year. And he's a YSU offer. Um, his dad played for the Penguins, and there's a good chance he might end up there as well. And so we'll see how that goes. So, so you mentioned Springfield. Some other teams out there, gentlemen? I'm going to surprise a lot of people, uh, I think, and, and a team that always seems to fly under the radar is Warren JFK. You know, they were in the state championship game last year. Everybody's going to look to Cam Hollibaugh. They, they lost Cam Hollibaugh. There's no way they can replace what they lost last year. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. You're going to see a kid named Caleb Hadley take a under center for, for Warren JFK. What he has in front of him is outstanding players on that offensive line. They still have Eddie Tripp Kiernan, who is a right-hander, broke his arm last year, and learned how to snap with his left hand. And I'm talking out of the shotgun, everywhere. You take that grit mentality, Warren JFK is going to be a team to beat because everybody seemingly counts them out every week for some reason. The low-hanging fruit, obviously, Austin Town and Ursuline, uh, two really good programs. I know that Coach Parker, uh, there's great expectations in Austin Town. Uh, there's a team in Division II to uh, Region 5 everyone knows about, Akron Hoban, and that's the team that Fitch is hoping to get past and get into the state semifinals. And, yeah, we'll see. It's they got a lot of they're, they got a lot of talent. They're both over good. There. Both of those two teams. Are, are, is the regular season mm -hmm. watered down now? I mean, no. we have we have great matchups in week one this year. If you really look yeah. at it, you have Poland Canfield, you have Palin Iowa, you have Springfield South Range, you have Brookfield McDonald. With 16 teams going to the playoffs, we may not see matchups like this anymore. I agree with that. Uh, I, I, what can we, we do? were we were talking before we went on the air. I don't. I can't remember a week one season or a week one schedule that's been this good in a long time. But, but my point is, because teams are now going to get into the playoffs, like I talked to one coach, he goes, look, I play this team, I don't have to play them anymore. Yeah, well. uh, yeah I think you're going to see a lot more of the schedules change yeah. with their non-conference opponents to be more favorable towards getting the kids victories. And not that they're not trying to win, but you're going to see some of these teams say, well, I don't want to schedule them because we might lose. You're going to see some cupcake schedules moving forward because, hey, if we get in at, at five and five, it doesn't matter where we line up. Look at Urson's schedule. They're, they're not taking a dive every week unless you want to call one of the city teams a dive. So that's like everybody else, and I'm, not, I'm just saying, everybody else on their schedule go through it is very solid. They're preparing for a run at a state championship they thought they were denied last year. And, uh, you know, Brady Shan looks great in the yes. scrimmage. He's got weapons everywhere in the backfield, in the air. Dean Boyd, everybody knows about him. He committed to Harvard, by the way. I don't know if that's public yeah, information yeah. or not. I don't know. Well, um, but, but, but again, and again, for we're going we're we're to get into this, this situation. I mean, Ursuline's playing teams. Um, they, they can't, you know, they're playing teams that are going to play them. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of local teams who are not going to play Ursuline. Maybe now with 16 teams going, does that open the door for some of these teams that haven't played mm -hmm. the parochials to play these teams? Canfield Mooney, Poland Mooney. Does that open the door for these types of matchups? I think you can look at it both sides of the fence. I mean, you can sit back and go, okay, we're going to cupcake our schedule, get a lot of wins, and put ourselves in the top 16. I think some of the coaches that want to win a championship are going to realize we can't play a cupcake schedule because we'll get destroyed in the postseason. We have to have some tough games in here. So I think there will be some coaches that actually go into the deep end and say, hey, 16 teams get in. 
We can be five and five and go 14 or 15. So let's go into the deep end and take on some teams and get our team playoff ready instead of being 10 and 0 and unprepared. Like like Fitch with Devin Sherwood, not that it matters this year, but you know they could play an extra harder game because 16 teams are going to make them. They, so instead of being a three seed, they'll be a seven seed or eight seed or just get better. That's what these but, but, these good teams yeah. are going to get better unless my, they're playing horrible. My horrible, my point though now is because you had to schedule for the playoffs, you don't have to schedule for the playoffs yeah. anymore. Well, be hard aggressive. Okay. Be more aggressive. But that but my my point now is is that does that open the door? For teams who maybe wouldn't play Ursuline, to play Ursuline, to play Mooney, to play JFK, to play Boardman, play Fitch, play Cannon. I agree. I, I think that's definitely the case. It's, yeah. it, it does, but it also, the battle of attrition in football, they're going to try to take it as easy as they can, especially with it starting a week you know, or two after baseball, trying to get that transfer of, hey, you're going from one sport to the next easing them into their their conference schedule i think that's what they're going to look for they're going to look for some of these teams that are one and nine maybe two and eight to try to fill it instead of going hey listen we really want to take on ursland or you know name this parochial school week one and and see you know where the chips lie but the bottom line is this is this year and we had some good games on thursday canfield holland i was hoping canfield, it was poland. Poland. Or poland excuse me i was hoping Maybe expecting maybe it's going to be a better game, but after seeing both teams, uh, maybe Ooh. not. I, I think Urson. <laughs> I mean, not no. It's just they're going to you know they're not going to see right. the ball flying all over. Hold, the field. hold that thought. We got to take That's another all. break. Again, if you have a question you would like us to attack or, or talk about a team, uh, put it into our Facebook message and yeah. we'll uh, we'll take care of that. We're going to touch on Struthers coming up after the break. Welcome back to our high school football roundtable. Again, the season kicks off Thursday with four area games, a full slate of games on Friday. Pennsylvania, our friends in Pennsylvania, begin a week after that. Let's talk Struthers a little bit. John Bank in his second year, uh, you know, six game schedules for a first year head coach last year. It, it, I mean, in my opinion, it's kind of a wash because you didn't play a full season and you really didn't have a lot of time. Well, he's got the big factor, so hopefully they'll have a season together. They learned a lot and learned their personnel and put in their programs. And, you know, I don't know what to expect. I really don't know, you know, what they're looking at and what their season's going to be like. But, um, you know, you get, you're good at the top, so hopefully they'll be able to work their magic because we all know what, what the Bayx can do with, the, with their teams eventually. Well, you lose your quarterback, you know, from last year, the Aiden X Hall. Factor, you know, and Aiden Hall, thank you. And, and it's one of those things where I don't think anybody knows exactly what to expect from Struthers this year. So that's their advantage is they're playing with house money uh, and they get to say, hey, we, we can change our, our format. We can change what we look like and feel like. Uh, but in that NEA conference, it's a bruising conference. Let's talk a little bit about the Northeast State. I mean, you know, you have 
you know, South Range, who, you know, is new to the conference, has really, I don't want to say dominated, but has made their mark in that conference. You have, you know, a Poland team, a, a Hubbard team, Niles. I mean, a pretty balanced conference. I, I think it's probably maybe the best conference right now in, in the area. I agree with that. And I think you look at South Range, is, is their name's always in the conversation. And that was the plan from the beginning. I think they're the smallest school in that conference. And they seemingly are always in the the, the the end of it of, hey, South Range is in there, whether it's swimming or football or anything. But you look at the talent they have, Dylan Dominguez could be one of the best backs in the area. Uh, the question mark is, is who the quarterback's gonna be. They have two options, but South Range will always be there because of their leadership with Dan Yeagley at the helm. Poland, um, you know, new program. They have Lansky Field. We got the reunion coming up on, on the weekend. Uh, you know, Jack Fulton's a more than capable quarterback. They have talent, Christian Colosimo. Uh, Dito outside. They lost Berenger. That's going to be a problem a little bit. No real bell cow. They're going to have to develop one. But uh, you know, I hope to see a little bit of mixed up. I don't want to see old Poland. I want to see. I am, I'm not, you know, everybody thinks I'm whatever. But I just, let's see a little mixed up the offense. And hopefully, you know, they're uh, working on some good things. But, you know, Pavlansky is, is an, it's a new program. And it's, you know, we'll see if he can turn the tide with Poland and get him a little bit further this year. Team that's lying in the weeds in that uh, conference is Hubbard. I really, really like Hubbard this year an awful lot. Uh, they've got, a, they've got a, a lot of talent coming back. Uh, that's a program year in, year out. Brian does a great job up there. Uh, the, the running back? The running back? TCI. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's it's going to be a lot of fun to watch that team play. Well, I, you know, their line's always big. I, I think that's the key. I think the question is going to be a quarterback. They had two guys. Hendricks was one of those guys who, who, who was thrown into the fire last year a little bit. Again, I think that Northeast is, is pretty well wide open. I mean, Gerard's still there. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, with that offense, you know, capable of putting some points up the board. Lakeview has a new mentor in, in Sam Bellino. You know, Jim Perry's been at Niles for a long time. And, and you know, John Bag taking over, you know, in Struthers in his, really his first full season. Um, we have about two minutes here. Dark Horse team. Uh, who, who's a dark horse out there? Valley Christian. I really like Valley Christian. Andy Hake in his first year back uh, taking over the Eagles. I, I, I really like them in the EOAC. Um, and I like the leadership that he's been able to bring to the table in the short time he's been back. I think Valley Christian's going to make some waves this year. Well, it's hard to say Harding will be a dark horse, but I think they have high expectations this year. Don Foss will be the quarterback for at least some of the time. I don't mm -hmm. know. If, all the time, he's a big, a, a highly recruited athlete. Uh, the running backs back for them, the little guy, and and uh, they could they have some high expectations. I talked to, you know, a couple of the players that I know. So, I mean, maybe they'll surprise us. And they beat Fitch last year after Fitch beat them in the regular season. So there's a little kind of a little rivalry that I like sure. to tweak if I can. Good Lord, I'm going to show some homerism here. Crestview, and there's one question with Crestview, and that's their offensive line. And in the two games that I've seen them play against Lisbon and East Liverpool, their offensive line played very well. If that line plays well, that offense is going to score 40 points a game, and Anthony Cusick will leave Crestview, breaking every single record for passing at Crestview High School. Can I give it LeBray, yes. uh, Stevens, quarterback? Yeah. Uh, they got weapons, graves, and, and running backs and receivers, and uh, they, they should do. Yeah. And, and, and I like Mineral Ridge. I, th I think yeah. the quarterback has really done a good job. I think uh, Brian Chainer has his has his mark on that program now. I, I think that's a team that can go eight and two, seven and three. Hold your thoughts when we come back. We'll have more of our high school football roundtable.
Hi everyone, welcome back. DJ Gary Run, I'm Dan as we uh, continue our high school football preview. State finals are back in Canton. I think it's the best place for these finals to be. I love it. I absolutely love it. I mean, to be able to play on some of the same fields that the legends played on and they're, you know, enshrined next door, great move by Ohio. In the South talks about, oh, they have to call, come all the way up to, to play in the Hall of Fame Stadium for crying out loud. It, that's a good venue for football. Dayton Arena is a good venue for basketball. So, yeah, why not? Make it a weekend and make it a Hall of Fame weekend for these teams that play in the tournament. Enjoy the Hall of Fame. Enjoy the atmosphere. It's a perfect venue. And it, it, the, the stadium, perfect size. You're not going to get 30,000, 40,000. Those days are gone. 20, 25,000 in a, in a stadium to watch high school football. Perfect. You know, as we as we kind of look toward, you know, week one and we talked about the matchup, is there one game this entire year that stands out for any of you that, you know, is a must-see game? Probably Fitch and Harding for me because those are the two big dogs and at least maybe enrollment-wise or bigger school-wise that have a little bit of an axe to grind maybe with each other or maybe we can make them have an axe to grind with each other and that should be a good, maybe they'll run into each other a couple times again next year, right? I like South Range Springfield. Okay. Week one, I think that's a game that can dictate a lot about how the season, the rest of the season goes after that game. Um, it's a game that didn't happen last year. That would have been a dream match, like Balboa versus anybody in boxing. Yeah. Um, but these are two teams that the rivalry is renewed. Exciting to see, and, and exciting to see who comes out on top. I'm with DJ. Springfield and South Range. Uh, if Springfield beats South Range, you can pencil in a 10-0 season for Springfield. Uh, if South Range were to get beat by Springfield, uh, you know that's that's a, a feather in the cap for whoever wins this game. If 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 South Range knocks off Springfield, feather in their cap as they go into a really really tough Northeast Eight this year. All right, game, so 21 game regular season winning streak for Springfield. Yep, yep, you're absolutely right. We're going to wrap things up after this break when we come back. But again, reminder: we'll be streaming on our, our website wfmj.com on our Facebook page. We'll wrap things up after this. Welcome back to our high school football roundtable. We're going to continue after we're off the air on WBCB on our website and Facebook page. So if you have a question, you can put it in the comment section. We'll try to answer as many as we can. We're down to two minutes. If you had to pick one team in Ohio in the Mahoning Valley to be playing for a state championship, playing for a state championship uh, the first week of December, who is it? We're in JFK. Oh. I'll, I'll, well, I'll go with the obvious, but I, I'm, I'll go with Ursuline and let Ron go with the obvious. I'm going to say Springfield, but nobody wins a state championship this year. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, I, third I, time's a charm. I think Ursuline uh, is, is, is uh, not saying I think they have the best chance to go. I also think Warren JFK has a great chance to go in Division Seven. Anything is possible. So uh, I, I like those two teams. No one wins a state championship. Nobody That's wins intriguing. a state championship. And nobody goes undefeated either. So in the regular season. So you're Plus, saying if Springfield beat South Range, you just said they would go undefeated. Now I, you're saying there's no undefeated team. But then you've pretty much figured out who I think is going to win week one. <laughs> we all know there's two sides to Ron's mouth. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. I don't think anybody goes undefeated, and I don't think anybody wins the state championship this year. 
Poland was one of the first teams to go, was it 14 15 and 0? 15 and 0, 1999. Okay, and now? 16 games. Could be spring, is, can Springfield play 16 games? Yes, they can. Okay. There you go. Mark it down. <laughs> 16 That's and 0. True. Why not? Okay. DJ? I like JFK a, a heck of a lot. I, I really do. And I think that they're going to keep that chip on their shoulder. Um, and, and I think they're going to throw the ball a little bit more. Coach Pro is not letting anything out of the bag. Um, but with a, a kid that's getting scouted by Major League Baseball teams, that's somebody to keep your eye on in, in, the, in the backfield. Well, we appreciate you watching on WBCB. Again, we will continue online for the next 15 to 20 minutes. Again, if you have a question, you can uh, put it in the comments section of our Facebook page. I uh, want to thank DJ Gary and Ron for coming in. Again, we're going to continue. Don't forget the Great Clips Overtime Report with all your highlights Friday night at 1110 as we get set for week number one.